Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtubs, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to continue with our updates of the art engine. So if you haven't seen the previous updates, please go ahead and look at the previous two videos. For today I'm going to focus on the generation part that I've implemented, so let's go ahead and start. So to illustrate my updates, I'm going to upload some data. And the data I'm going to choose are the sketchy apes or the sketchy fusions actually, because it has a few edge cases. I'm quite happy how the folders are set up off the bat. So I'm going to just go ahead and create a group. So as you can see, first of all, our collection has a lot more uh, configuration that you can set. We'll talk about that on a later video. For now, let's focus on the generations. Previously, I also mentioned that you can have edge cases where you could have for the face straight, you could have a normal face and a chest like this, and maybe like this as well. But you can also have an edge case, which means that the chest and the face is split up, and therefore we can individually uh, look at them and then position them how we need them to render in order. So the next step for us is to make sure that we are happy with the probabilities. And yes, I'm using probabilities instead of instances. This is just for the MVP. So one probability that I would love to set is the backpack because I really want to use that as an example. So I'm going to give that a higher probability uh, and increase the likelihood of it being chosen. So next we need to go and check how this is actually going to look. So we're going to go to our preview and we're going to select the group so that we can start rearranging um, our layers to see which one comes before the other. With our group selected, we can just start dragging. So I know that the background needs to go first. Uh, then we probably need the body. Then we're going to have the face and the props. Okay. So we're going to have it in this order. And then maybe the clothing can come before the props because props are uh, things like the backpack and sometimes on the face as well. So. I'm happy with this and uh, I'm not happy with this probability. So I'm just going to, for the x-ray, I'm just going to make that a lot less and increase the probability of a none trait to be selected. So now if I select our group and I generate, I can see that this kind of makes sense, right? But there's a problem. You see when the backpack renders, it kind of renders on top of it all and we want the backpack part to be behind the body. So let's go and start configuring these edge cases. So how do we tell the program that we want the back of this backpack to actually be behind the, uh, let's say body, for example. But you see here some Z indexes here on the left hand side on the traits, and we can see that the body is at Z index 200. So if we go on the backpack and we select this link, which is the backside, and we tick off relative, we can now manually set and say this should render at 150 Z basically. So above the background and behind the body. And so you don't see the changes here because we need to uh, go and click on the group. So now let's go and generate and I missed it, but there we go. We can see that the back of the backpack is now behind the body. And that is pretty cool, right? I mean, this is all to do with this global Z index. And so we can even move the backpack itself to a different index as well. But we don't want to do that. Let's see a case where we do want that to happen. For that, I'm going to increase the probability of some of these X-ray traits. So for example, this one 10. And let's just go ahead and generate and hope we get a uh, random uh, x-ray here we go so the x-rays are cool but what happens when the backpack gets rendered with a x-ray right so i'm going to lessen the none trait so we get a bigger probability of rendering um, an x-ray with the backpack and there we go so i want the straps to be above this x-ray and that's very simple we're going to go to the strap layer go and tick that off and make this z700 which would be above the x-ray and so now if we generate and we see the backpack we can see that it's above the x-ray and the back is behind the body but like i said we can do this with normal traits as well so let's check out 
the striped cap. I'm gonna increase the probability of that being rendered so we have a higher chance. We generate it a few times and we can see that the X-ray is going over this cap, but it would be cool if the caps are above the X-ray. So simple, again, we go to the cap, we turn off relative, we say this needs to render at 700 as well. And so now if we generate, we can see that the cap is above the X-ray. And so our collection starts getting more and more uh, precise, how we want it, where we want traits to actually render. The next thing I want to show it has actually to do with the rules. Now this was a question that was asked if I'm going to add rules and yes I am, although the rules are not perfected at this stage. So I'm going to make it as an experimental feature. But let's go ahead and let, let's select this clothing and actually I see the Santa trait down here. I'm going to increase the probability quite a lot so that we can definitely see a Santa being rendered. Now, as you can see here, the backpack works well with the Santa because it's quite, uh, I would call it voluptuous, right? It's a voluptuous Santa. So the straps kind of forms nicely around uh, the Santa's body. But if we see that the other traits get rendered where there's a backpack, it doesn't fit quite nicely. Maybe I want the backpack trait only to render um, or be compatible with the Santa, right? And so what I'll do is I'll go to my backpack and I'll click on rules. And so here I can see I've got rules that say only compatible with options. And so now I can go to the clothing and I can say, well, I only want this to be compatible with the Santa. And you can see a little star that gets added, meaning that this um, trade or option has a rule to it. So basically now, uh, when we generate, we can uh, generate as much as we want to. When we get a Santa and it selects a um, backpack, in this case it didn't, right? Because it's not uh, bound to the backpack. It's just saying that if that was to be selected, if the backpack were to be selected, it can only work with the Santa outfit. So I'll need to generate quite a few times to get this to work. And it did, and I'm missing it. Come on, why am I missing it? I definitely need to add like some sort of search feature. Okay, I'm missing this thing too much. So let's try again. But you can see the gist of it working. There we go. Okay, so you see the backpack not being selected with any other clothing but the Santa. And this gives us a very good um, way of adding rules uh, to our traits. But I'm going to take it off for now because as I said, this is experimental and I still need to work on that. However, let's go ahead and generate. So in the generation section, what do we do? It's very straightforward. So you'll have your collection, and you'll have your groups. We can set the amount of images and metadata we want to export, and we get to set the size. Then we go here and we click on generate. I'm going to ask you to say OK, to download a file. What this file is, is essentially your collection. So if you were to refresh the actual uh, application and you lost all your data, you can just re-upload this and everything will be here. After signing the messages, uh, we now have a seeded random collection that has been generated. How cool is this? And so in this generator interface, we can just see all the traits. Uh, we can filter by the ID, right? And we can also filter by the traits. So if I want to see the Santa, there's quite a lot of Santas. Um, and uh, that's basically it, right? So let's search for the backpack. Because we love that backpack, we can see only three of the items have uh, this backpack. And so what we now have is a collection that we can run through and just check and verify that uh, we are quite happy with the results. So this uh, window over here is like a preview to what is going to be the final output. And so now we are basically ready to render. In order for us to render, we need to give access to the folder where we're going to render to because this all happens client side, which is great. And now once we have done that, we can just simply click on render. Now I hope you can see here on the side as well, how the images start being created. 
So we can see that there were 10 images being created and it does take some time, which is something I need to work on because it saves that in memory and then refreshes it. So we have to unfortunately wait a bit for it to populate, but it is there, it's all client side. And I think this is pretty cool. So we can just go ahead and open up our beautiful NFT images that uh, we have created without the metadata. That's something that I need to implement because we have different metadata that uh, all the chains support, right? So that's something that will be added as well. But now you can see the progress and I think it's getting pretty far. Um, for the MVP though, I do need to scale down the size of the application. And what I mean by that is there's just too many features that I would love to implement, uh, but I also don't wanna spend a whole year building this thing and never getting it out. And I would rather want to lessen the features, get it out uh, to you guys so that you can use it, play around, have some fun and generate some cool artworks. But anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed the update. As always, let me know in the comments what you love the most. And um, yeah, till next time, see you in the next video. Cheers for now.